So for these next two days, I am going to take a look at these two expansion teams, that is Nashville SC and Inter Miami, and how they, of course, made it to the playoffs this season. And remember how I said earlier that this is the only season in MLS history where both expansion teams actually made it to the playoffs? Well, that actually isn't true, because if you remember all the way back in 1998, the Chicago Fire and the Miami Fusion both made it to the playoffs as an expansion team and that therefore this is actually only the second time in league history where we saw two expansion team are able to make it to the playoffs and i know when you look at at these two expansion team and how they make it to the playoffs there's no doubt that nashville is going to get the more more applause of them making the playoffs compared to inter miami and that i'm going to reiterate in tomorrow's video talk about inter miami how they make it to the playoffs and how yeah, there's a lot of criticism of, of the way how they made it to the playoffs and that if you look at past expansion team, Inter Miami actually had one well, of the worst points per, per game total compared to past expansion team. And yet, the only reason why they made it is because of the benefit of the doubt that the, the playoffs was expanded this year. Although for Nashville, I don't think they really need that benefit of the doubt because at the end of the year they finished seventh in the eastern conference and if we wouldn't have to go with this expanded playoffs that we had to do this season nashville would have made it as the final team heading out out in the east and that just kind of makes it see why people really applaud of what they have done and that they really defy a lot of people thinking and that remember how how all the way back in february and how i i predicted that this team uh, I'm also going to eventually have to do a video where I have to look back at all the all the prediction I made in terms of the standings and you know I'm still kind of not sure whether or not should I do it because it's been a crazy years and since there's a lot of things has happened I bet that that standings and that, that I made back in February is as irrelevant as many people make their prediction in terms of their standings but I'll probably do it just because it is a tradition that I do that for every year but I remember back then, I actually predicted this team to finish near the bottom of the Western Conference. And even though they, of course, move it to the Eastern Conference, look where they at right now. And the way that they prove everybody wrong. The fact that they were not only able to make get to the playoffs, but comfortably make it to the playoffs out of the Eastern Conference. Now, uh, we begin talking about Nashville Road to the playoffs all the way back in February 29th. As people forget that that was when the season began. I mean, it feels like an eternity ago with the way that the season began back all the way on February 29th. But that was a game where it was the first game in in MLS history and that there was 60,000 people that was in hand to, to watch this game at Nissan Stadium. But unfortunately, Nashville, of course, suffered a 2-1 loss against, against their close southern rival Atlanta United although that was also a game where they they were able to score their first ever goal in MLS history and it was Walker Zimmerman the one that scored the first ever goal and they actually took the lead with that first ever goal that they scored in MLS history now another thing that I think also it feels like an eternity ago but it actually happened this year too is that people forgot that there was actually a devastating tornado that hit the Nashville area and you know, I remember, remember all the way back that that time where I think it was David Akon basically posted in a, a picture of the devastation that was go, going on and that you know certainly in the very next game the Portland Timbers was definitely donating their cause and I believe for every tickets that they sold they gave like one dollar to the ch charity to to Nashville in terms of them rebuilding in terms of that devastated tornado that hit them but in terms of that game, well, Nashville unfortunately lost their first ever road game against the Portland Timbers. But from what I remember in that game, even though they only lost one nothing in that game, they could have won that one. I mean, that was a game that, that I also remember. If you're a Portland Timbers fan, you were kind of a very unnervy with the way that they barely scraped by and get a one nothing victory. And Nashville was re really in this game and that if they only had a, a player that can of course of course be clinical in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net they could have easily won that game against the Portland Timbers but then after that we know the rest is pretty much history the world pretty much gone gone into to in, insane mode and that the season basically was shut shut down for a couple of months because of the you know what pandemic 
happen. Now, by the time when we get into the MLS's back tournament, Nashville was supposed to participate in the MLS's back tournament, and they were supposed to play Chicago in the first game. And then, yeah, Nashville got into a COVID outbreak alongside with FC Dallas, and therefore both of them was kicked out of the tournament. And I also forgot to mention that this was also the time when they basically switched back to what I thought should have been been the the conference that they were in in the Eastern Conference. I mean, I, I always feel, feel that was kind of strange, the fact that Nashville was put in the West, considering the fact that they are probably the team that is the easternmost part of the United States to consider being a Western Conference team. But they moved back to the East, and in the first game that they play in, in over five months against FC Dallas, they made a historical moment by winning winning for the very first time in MLS history by winning one nothing against FC Dallas. And I believe that was David Akam, the one that scored the winning goal in the 88th minute to give Nashville a one nothing lead. Now, in the very next game, yeah, let's just kind of not talk about that one because that, that game not only ended 0-0, but it's probably remembered as one, if not the most boring MLS game I've ever seen this season. And, you know, these two games was you know part of what i said the mls is back or the non mls is back invitational no game and let's just say that when you see both teams that haven't played in five months and they have to quickly kind of turn around to play two games in a span of four days you can clearly see that things were not going to be be pretty and you could even argue that both of these teams could have ended nil nil if it wasn't for nashville able to get that that late goal in the first first game of this non-invitational MLS's back tournament game between both of these teams. Now, the following week, they did lose again to Atlanta, this time by a score of 2-0. Then they lost 3-1 against Orlando City, and I really thought this was probably the lowest point for Nashville because, you know, despite the fact that, yes, they got a historic first win in franchise history, they have now pretty much lost their first four, four games out of the first six game in their franchise history and that things were definitely looking grim for this this Nashville team and it doesn't even like at that point if you ask Nashville fans that they that literally about two months later they would would clinch a playoff spot you would they would probably think I'm, I'm just crazy or whatever but yeah things were definitely looking grim for Nashville and that I really thought that was probably the lowest point in in their franchise history history from their expansion year but the very very next couple of days they play against Inter Miami and they also make some historical thing in their team by getting their first ever home win against Inter Miami by a final score of one nothing. then the very next game they were able to get a 1-1 draw against Orlando City before getting a 0-0 draw against Inter Miami on the road I remember that was the game game that basically kicked off very late into the night because there was lightning that was delayed in this game for like an hour and a half and the kickoff didn't didn't start until like around 9 50 p.m eastern time but that was also a game that i think nashville fans will remember a game that they probably should have won against inter miami with some of the some of the big chances that they had in that one now the very very next next week on september 12th they grab grab a 4-2 victory against atlanta united and to this day that is still the most goal that they have scored in in a single game and you know the the thing that i mentioned about how nashville actually got to the playoffs isn't because of the fact that you know this team is kind of the complete opposite as what we saw with atlanta and lafc making to the the, the playoffs as an expansion team you know those teams are teams that play very entertaining being soccer and basically smash above their weight in terms of making to the playoffs as an expansion team and also broke records in terms of the amount of points that an expansion team got in their first season this that's not what nashville is nashville is a team that has this kind of gritty kind of mindset where they can can somehow just gr grind their way to get all three points and that even though they don't have the attacking power to maybe score like one one two or even three goals in a game they have just such a stingy defense that it just makes life very hard for opposition to work for because they don't really give them a lot of space on on the attacking end and this is kind of the strategy that you know it had even though some people will say that it's kind of negative so soccer and it's not the prettiest at the end of the day you know it doesn't really matter if it's the prettiest soccer or not if it gets resort as 
what Gary Smith team have done throughout this season, you're going to potentially make it to the playoffs. And it, I think as the season goes along, I actually start really liking how Nashville is playing. Believe me, I'm not one of those person that love to watch these this kind of brand of soccer where it was it's kind of like a grind out resort. Believe me, as a Quakes fan, I remember back in the mid mid 2010s and the, the first couple of years of supporting the Quakes and how we were playing almost the same brand of soccer that Nashville of course did and that the only difference is back then we weren't able to get get enough resort by playing those grind grind out kind of soccer game and unable to get more free points than what Nashville did but you know it was effective throughout the season and you're going to see there's going to be a lot of games where they either win only by one nothing or it's going to be like a 1-1 draw and you don't really see like these 4-2 resort other than I think there there's only only four other times where they actually score more more than two goals during this season now in the very next game I thought this was you know this 4-2 win for Nashville probably was at that point the highest moment of this team because you're thinking maybe the, the attack can of course get going and maybe this is something that they they can can definitely carry into the next one against a very tough Columbus team. Well, unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, they lost 2 nothing in that game against the Columbus crew, but they did bounce back in a game where I thought this was a winnable game against DC United, and that you would say that it was kind of a must win for Nashville. They were thinking about maybe even getting some, so, some chances of entering the conversation of making the playoffs. Well, they did. They grind out a classic Nashville kind of, Kind of game by winning one nothing against DC United. They did let let the next game slip where they were up one nothing for a very long time for Houston, but unfortunately gave up a late goal to tie one one. Before in the very next game against New England, this was probably one of the most underrated game game that I think people for, forgot that this was actually a huge resort for Nashville because this was a game where Nashville was. As depleted as it get where they basically had no attacking threat whatsoever against New England and New England basically put them like throughout the game pretty much treat them like a punching back but the thing about Nashville and the and the way that since they are they have such a stingy defense and don't really allow a lot of things they frustrate New England throughout the whole whole game and able to get a gritty nil nil draw where I, I was kind of shocked the fact that with how shorthanded Nashville was coming into the, that game and granted yes New England haven't done very well this season at home and they have problems in terms of putting the ball into the back of the net whenever they get to the final third but still there's not a lot of team where you have no attacking option whatsoever and you just hope to go on on the road to play for a no no draw and especially during this kind of day where I mentioned many times before where teams trying to play a no no draw on the road it just does not work what whatsoever but this was one of the rare time that it actually did did work and I think in in many ways this is gonna be a resort that many people might have forgotten to be a very important resort for Nashville but but if you look at at, at, at it in in kind of an out-of-the-box standpoint you can see see how big big this resort was for this Nashville team. Now, in the very next game, they once again drew nil nil to Minnesota. But again, that was another game where they were without some some of their attacking option. Before the very next one against SKC, you know they unfortunately let elites slip, and I think that probably was the only time in their club history where they were up one nothing in in that game and ultimately lose two two one and let that lead slip but that was also the first time that Nashville of course had a red card in the game and it still remains the only game where Nashville finished a game with, with without 11 men on the field and as we're going to talk about Inter Miami tomorrow there was multiple time that they actually finished with, with just 10 men on the pitch now in the very next one they were able to bounce back by grabbing an impressive 3-1 win against the Houston Dynamo and what's impressive about that game is that they went 3-0 up inside 25 minutes. And when I saw the sc scoreline, it was 3-0 Nashville inside 25 minutes. I was stunned. Like, again, this is not a Nashville team that's known to be kind of an attacking threat. And the fact that they went 3-0 up against Houston inside 25 minutes, it, it's just, it kind of 
shocked me a little bit. But ultimately, they were able to hang on to win 3-1 against Houston, despite the fact that the Dynamo were really putting a lot of pressure on them. And then on October 20th, this was probably one, if not the most impressive victory for Nashville in this expansion season by winning 3 nothing against FC Dallas. And that, that not only is the biggest margin of victory, but I believe Lee, that is... Um, actually, uh, let me take a look. Yeah, that, I think that's the, the first game where they actually are able to get a shutout. This, like, they, they are score, despite not just scoring one goals and that, they, they basically got a shutout in a multi goal game. And, you know, what's so impressive about that game is that they pretty much, much dominated FC Dallas for the entire, entire part of the game. And this is also the game where you start to really believe that playoffs was that definitely in hand was definitely in reach and you know i think up until probably the nashville versus minnesota or actually go all the way back into october this is where i think nashville started to kind of get into that conversation that maybe this team actually will make the playoffs and maybe this is going to be a team that's going to defy all logic and get themselves above the red line and somewhere around this line they actually got themselves above the red line for the very first time in their franchise history now in the very next game they drew 1-1 against new england but they did and then the very next one i actually don't know why i say it, but they did because the very next game would be a historical moment for for nashville as they were able to go on the road not only to get a gritty one nothing resort and once again play a very classic nashville kind of a way of soccer to get all three points but they clinched a playoff spot in on that night and again i i think at the beginning of the season nobody saw this one coming with the way that nashville will clinch a playoff spot but consider how early they clinch a playoff spot like i would think the best case scenario for nashville is that they will clinch a playoff spot but they'll probably leave it on decision day and and just barely get themselves into the playoffs well reality says that that was not the case whatsoever and in the end they actually got got it with just three games to to spare and that you know the attention after the after when they clinch a playoff spot isn't really just the fact that can they hold on to get to to get maybe just the the 10th seed or the ninth seed this team was really gunning to trying to maybe even make noise of reaching the top half of the table and even avoid play in the play-in round because the very next game they drew 1-1 against the chicago fire which which basically extend the longest unbeaten streak this season at five games. They did unfortunately lose Dallas in the next one, and I think this might be a game that kind of hurt their chances in terms of making it into the playing round. But they, they even though in the very final day, and again, this is a game against Orlando City where Nashville doesn't really have much to play for. I mean, I know they still were mathematically they can get that playing round, but really, they didn't really have a lot lot to prove in this game and that against an Orlando team that also doesn't have a, a lot of pr lot to prove in this game you know and for how, how this game works where I thought Orlando was going to easily get the win that just didn't happen and that this is also a game where Nashville kind of proved people wrong again about the fact that well we know this Nashville team is a gritty kind of soccer team that can get all three points but can they actually come back when they are facing adversity? And at least we haven't seen it very often where they are able to come back from adversity. And when they go down late in the game or early in the game, they're able to flip the, the, the switch and able to win this game. This one is the game that proved people wrong. That Nashville can actually, actually flip the script and can actually come back late in the game. Because as we saw in this game against Orlando City, they scored two late goals to win this one. 3-2 and again even though I know this game is kind of irrelevant and people will just say that Orlando City wasn't really playing their strongest team this is kind of a game that I think thing will give Nashville a lot of confidence heading into the playoffs and that you know as I as I said before for uh in that game against Inter Miami of why I think Nashville was going to be favorites in that and why they're most likely going to be only that second team in MLS history or not that second team, but only the third team in MLS history to win a playoff game in their expansion year is because they de definitely have have a better structure and definitely have more confidence what, than what 
you say Inter Miami currently have heading into to the play, playoffs this season. But that being said, that is pretty much how Nashville, of course, got to the playoffs. And that, you know, tomorrow, as I said, I am going to do the video, talk about Inter Miami. And that one is going to be a little bit tough because Inter Miami themselves, yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of naysayers saying, saying that they probably don't belong to be in the playoffs and they only got lucked out because of of the expanded playoffs but i will also talk about some of the adversity that they had to face and in some way i think inter miami just looking at their road to the playoffs is kind of even more interesting than how nashville is i mean nashville the way that they got to the playoffs is very interesting and in that they also had to face adversity throughout the way but it isn't as crazy as what inter miami did where it was really a roller coaster ride with how that team of course made it to the playoffs and got a playoff spot on the very final day but until then hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys see a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time